Perfect, we can see that. Wonderful, brilliant. Um, so what I'm hoping to talk to you about today is um, my experience using scale up teaching methodology pre pandemic, how we then turned that into an online teaching method during the pandemic when we were entirely online and how I'm now using it in kind of our um, active learning framework that we have here at the university, which is a, a blend of online and in person um, activities. Um, so to kind of set a little bit of context for that, I guess I need to tell you what scale up is if you haven't heard of it before. Um, we love an acronym in education. So scale up stands for student centered active learning environments with upside down pedagogies. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, I appreciate, but the idea is that it's this digitally enhanced classroom that is specifically designed for students to do flipped learning in essentially. So instead of using classroom time to deliver lectures, we use it for setting um, problem based activities that students work through in group settings. Um, we do a lot of questioning, we give the students opportunity to reflect on, on the content that we've covered. And essentially the focus shifts away from me um, and onto the students who are kind of encouraged to share their knowledge and, and discuss and collaborate. And I think it's particularly interesting in my subject area, which is forensic science, because um, it allows the students to kind of question a little bit more. And I think perhaps in some science, science subjects, historically, people are like, these are the facts. You need to learn the facts. Um, and actually, we need to kind of explore topics a little bit more um, innovatively. Um, and this all kind of came about as part of the university's um, campus redevelopments. Um, so we were quite privileged to be able to, to use some of these specialist teaching rooms uh, before we went into lockdown. Um, if you want to have a look at the classroom yourself, if you've got a QR code scanner, you should be able to scan the code on the screen now. Um, but don't panic if not, I'll, I'll kind of give you a bit of a virtual tour. Um, because fundamentally, the classroom setup in the first place um, is what I really liked about Scale Up and, and how I got involved with it. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to quickly switch you to um, our digital viewer here. Um, so we're outside one of the scale up classrooms here um, on our B corridor and hopefully if the internet plays ball with me I'll be able to take you inside and we can have a look um, and it's always on days like this when it, it kind of fails me and the model's not working um, but basically what you what you see is um, it's a cafe like setup so rather than students being in rows facing towards a teacher um, the whole room is actually set up so the students are in um, small groups. Um, the idea works around principles of nine, so students working in groups of nine students and within those groups they work in threes and each of those students has a specific role. So you have a manager, you have a scribe, and you have a sceptic and they'll work together as a group to do whatever task it is that you and then those groups can collaborate into bigger groups and then they can share across the classroom. And um, as you can see in the room here, we've got screens around the perimeter and power outlets for the students here. And what this actually means is the students could be working on something in the, um, their groups here and then they can project it um, up onto these screens to share with others. And in the corner over here, we've actually got like a central control panel. And what this allows is, say the group in this table are doing something really good that I want to share with everybody in the class, I could change the settings so that all the screens around the room then show that. Um, and this particular room as well has this partition wall that can be removed and it has another classroom the same the other side. So you can actually scale this up to work really well with, with quite big groups. Um, so the flexibility I really liked and the fact that students can be doing these different tasks um, really sort of appealed to my teaching style. Um, so in 2018, we launched this as kind of a, a small scale project. Um, I'm part of the academic development team here at the university, which is kind of a, um, a multidisciplinary cross institutional um, group of people that are trying to enact change and um, I was on both the digital learning and the teaching and assessment strands and this kind of overlapped between the two quite nicely. 
Um, so I tried it initially with a level six group just in one module. Um, it's a gory module in forensic taphonomy, so lots of visuals of decomposition and things like that, and lots of research-led investigation. And after a couple of sessions, I like fell in love with it. And in my head, I was only ever going to teach scale-up methodology ever again, and it was the, the best thing, um, and everyone should be doing it. Um, it allowed a much more practical approach to stuff that couldn't realistically be done practically. Um, we do have some decomposition research facilities here at the university, but getting the students out doing stuff and making sure that the, the types of things that they're able to see are right at the right points was difficult. Um, and by the following year, I'd pretty much converted like half of all of my teaching into scale up teaching. Um, I was doing sort of six hours in the scale up classroom at least every week um, across all levels of forensic science. Um, now, the key thing with the scale up is that they have to have some prior knowledge come into the activities. So rather than having um, like lectures with me and then scale up with me, I was doing recorded lectures, I was giving them papers to read and things like that. And then when they came into the classroom, they were looking at case studies and drawing on their research to decide what might have happened in that particular case. Um, they were researching scenarios as if they were responding to a police incident. Um, we even did one that was a, a proposal for developing a whole new facility for studying decomposition. Um, and the students seemed to be really enjoying it. Um, so I did a little bit of a small scale project to try and get some student perceptions um, in January 2020. And I've included some of the quotes here from the students. Um, and they, they seem to be liking it. There was certainly a divide between those that were good at attending anyway and obviously attending scale up and those that were a bit more sporadic, not engaging very well. But what I found seemed to align with what other researchers that were using um, scale up found. And generally I was pretty chuffed with myself and I started writing it all up. And then the pandemic hit and we very quickly obviously had to move everything online. I was quite lucky in a way, so because I planned my whole semester for this scale up style, I'd already started curating quite a lot of asynchronous content. So I'd recorded some of my content and I'd co like collated some of the reading the students was, were going to do. Um, so flipping that bit online worked really well. What I hadn't en envisioned was how the actual classroom flip was going to work. Um, and one thing that really kind of challenged me initially um, was the fact that teams did not have breakout rooms when we first started teaching online. Um, so I've included a screenshot here of when I finally managed to set up my multiple groups and have calls like running in them all the time, um, which was quite an achievement. So I had to spend a lot more of the time not supporting the students with their problem solving questions, but instead actually I had to spend the time making sure the tech was running. Um, students had IT issues as well, so some had really unreliable Wi-Fi, so they were missing big like chunks of conversation. Um, some only had one, one device between their family, so being able to actively engage in those discussions was challenging, and the nature of the scale up does mean that if you miss that session it's hard to kind of catch up. Um, we also had some students that didn't have microphones available, so they couldn't even participate in the discussions if they wanted to. I did notice as well that when we were before traditional breakout rooms came in, um, we had a lot of students that went missing between the in initial call with me and then the, the breakout rooms they went into. Um, and we had some fun adapting to sort of accessibility. Um, we had a deaf student, so we had to work out how to have a sign language interpreter on the screen as well as everything else that was going on. But it worked OK and, and it kind of did the job for when we were entirely online. And then this academic year, we've kind of come back onto campus and that's given me a, a really interesting opportunity to then reflect on how I'm going to use scale up going forward. Um, and I've noticed a few things and these are just sort of my own little observations and I haven't necessarily done a significant amount of research or data gathering on it. But I've noticed that the student autonomy around 
their own learning and engagement in those preparatory activities that had set was so much better. So they're much more confident at finding that content, working through it on their own, um, dealing with their own Googleables. Um, so the things that they would ask me that I just said to them, I'm pretty sure that I'm just going to say the same to you as Google will. They just dealt with them themselves now because they'd have to do that a lot, lot more through um, lockdown. I found as well that everybody's digital literacy was just so much better. So we had to spend a lot of time originally in the classroom learning how to screen share, learning how we could all collaborate on one document, all those sorts of things took up quite a lot of the time in the classroom, certainly for the first few weeks of a module. But that was kind of non-issue when we came back because everybody was so much more confident with the devices. And that kind of meant that the physical space that we had to scale up in, although those classrooms are brilliant, they're less important because as long as there's a way that they can get the content from their screens onto the main screen through things like Padlet, through things like Teams and stuff like that, we were still able to do scale up even in a non scale up classroom. Um, and that worked really well as well with kind of an accidental high flex approach. So where some of the students were still stuck at home isolating or looking after kids that were isolating, others that were in the class were willing to just call them on Teams and plonk the laptop down next to them in the room as if they were there. So attendance improved a lot, um, but also punctuality. So because campus is generally quieter, students tended to arrive earlier and sort of sit and have a bit of a chat with each other. And I think they're starting to appreciate more those little chats that you have while you sat at the table next to each other or when you're walking to get a coffee that kind of consolidate the learning have really helped. We've probably lost some of the time that we've made back up <laughs> because everybody now just loves a chat. So the time we've saved dealing with the tech issues is probably now lost to just generally having a chat. But I've been reluctant to kind of nip that in the bud because I think everybody deserves a little bit more of the social stuff at the moment. Um, and it's given me a really good opportunity to reflect as well. So like I said, I love to scale up. I still really enjoy it, but I've seen how I can actually use it in a very different way now and that it's less reliant on physically having to book that classroom. Um, Amy, I'm so course. sorry. I'm so sorry. We've, we've run out of time. OK, <laughs> um, um, so I had a little quote which you could all read at some point. If you're interested in more about scale up, there's some literature links here as well. And there we go. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry for interrupting, but we, no, uh, it's absolutely uh, we do have to quit time. We have reached time, but I guess, I don't know if this is a quick answer or not, but if we could keep it to maybe a minute or so, then we've still got time for everyone to grab a drink and stretch their legs. Um, uh, um, Mike, I believe, um, who has his hand up, has a question for you. Are you able to ask your question, Mike? Sorry, I didn't unmute. I thought it would automatically unmute. Yeah, that's great, Amy. Um, you're obviously a very enthusiastic teacher. Uh, how did you handle the problem that most people who try flipped teaching have is that some students don't do the preparatory work and just come into the classroom and haven't done the reading or watched the lecture? Um, peer pressure is a wonderful thing, um, not that I encourage that, but it became very clear who was going to um, who was going to do the work and who wasn't. So there was a lot of the sort of you've got to come because you've done this bit and you haven't. Um, but I did also allow for the fact that some students wouldn't have done the work. So perhaps they could take on the role of the scribe or something like that in that particular lesson so that it wasn't the end of the world. Um, before the pandemic, people were worse at doing the pre-recorded content, the sort of directed side of things. But I think because they've just had to do that a lot more now, they're better at it. They're kind of accepting that it doesn't have to be a traditional lecture and that actually they can get a lot more from that. But yeah, it's, there's always going to be some students that, that don't do the work, unfortunately. But I think the 
sounds awful, but the embarrassment sometimes of not knowing what they're doing in front of everybody else does does do wonders. And we'd feel that ourselves in the workplace. Yeah, very true. Thank you. Um, and yeah, just to echo what Mike said, it's really nice to see someone who's so enthusiastic about teaching. I love it. Um, so yeah, well done. I've seen in the, the chat some people had asked for the slides. I'm happy for those to be shared um, afterwards. Um, Brilliant, so all thank the, you. All the links and stuff like that will be there and my contact details if anyone wants to chat more. Brilliant. Thank you, Amy. Um, and I know Amy's got to dash off at the moment, but if you did have any questions for Amy, if you could stick them in the chat and we will uh, see if we can get those to Amy um, and maybe get a reply back to you in some way or another.